Now, depending on where you find the relevant information, there may be more than 7 million closed circuit television cameras in the UK. That, if it's correct, would mean one for every 11 people. There's no legal need as such to register CCTV cameras, so there are only guesstimates available. There may be nearly a million CCTV cameras in London alone, with the average punter captured on screen 70 times a day. One way or another, the intensity of this surveillance of our every move is set to increase. The many consequences are too numerous to mention, but for a start, what are the likely impacts on our environments? Communities around the UK are actively protesting and asking important questions. My next guest is presenter and activist Richard Munn, and he joins me now. Hey, Hello there, thank uh, you for joining me. Or good evening. Uh, t to paraphrase the old line, uh, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean you're not being watched. Are we mostly unaware of what's going on around us in terms of the growth of all of this technology? I think we are. I think we are, Neil, because many of these cameras that have always been uh, in our towns and city centres, there's more and more of them popping up and they're more and more disguised to blend in with our surroundings. So now they used to be, they used to be on big poles, big white cameras. Uh, you could see them moving around, following you up and down the street. Now, if you go into most parks, most public areas, they're like ball shaped, they're smaller. Uh, you can't see them rotating to follow you around. And it's not just outdoors. We also find this indoors. Uh, in supermarkets, in public areas, even when you're scanning your uh, groceries at the local supermarket, there's a camera installed in many of these self-service machines that's actually monitoring your face when you're doing it. So there doesn't really seem to be any escaping from it. T to give the devil his due, what is supposed to be the justification for all of this watching and recording? Well, of course. Well, of course, it's to keep us safe. This is the justification that's used to impose just about any draconian measure upon us, as we've seen over the last three years. So we were locked down for our safety. We were uh, mandated to take an injection for our safety. Now we're being told that we're being monitored for our safety and that they want to push us down a digital highway for our safety to protect us, to protect our money in the bank, to protect our identities, to protect our safety as we walk around in public it's so much more comforting they say when big brother's watching you so it's supposed to put us at ease rather than make us paranoid but of course anyone with any sense in their head will realize that there's no need for this it's complete overkill when it comes to surveillance uh, and there is uh, i'm well aware of this insidious creep of uh, uh you, know, you know this idea that we're all to be regarded as guilty somehow until we are able to prove ourselves innocent this idea of zero trust um, but to get to the specifics of what I was looking at earlier today, and that I mentioned in my introduction there, what is the impact on our environments? You know, our, our lived environments as they're described in our towns and cities. Well, uh, there seems to be, at the moment in the UK and Ireland, there seems to be a real spate uh, of eco-terrorist attacks going on in local parks, town centres, public areas where there's a lot of tree felling going on. Uh, this is starting to bubble up to the fore more often now. It's happening more frequently and it's more intense. And since I've begun to you know, keep an eye on this and report on this myself, a lot of people have been messaging me saying, hang on a minute, this is happening in my village. This is happening in my town and this is coming right across the UK and one of the reasons they're giving to chop down trees and wreck uh, ecosystems is because again it's to protect us uh, it interferes with surveillance it, it stops cameras seeing dark corners of our city centres and towns potentially uh, and it's supposed to make us feel safer again or uh, the other aspect is uh, you know you see vast amounts of trees being felled at the minute across the country because they say they want to make way for eco-friendly bus routes they want to save the environment so it's either to help save the planet or to make us feel safer, that seems to be the justification for uh, getting out the heavy plant material and uh, removing trees en masse from various parts of the country. What is the, the, the latest addition to all that's being added to our environment? I'm thinking specifically of the 5G uh, you know, iteration of, uh, of the masts that are to transport and transmit all of our, all of our data and, and tech that we share. Uh, around us, you know, what is that? What is the impact of that in this context? 
Well, apparently even some of the local councils have came out and said that part of their justifications for doing this was that it will interfere with 5G transmission. So if you have a 5G post, the chances that you'll see a lot of thick foliage around that are very, very slim because it does interfere with 5G transmission. Now, of course, some people will discount that as a conspiracy theory. I don't have any scientific evidence to back that up. But what I'm saying is some local councils have actually said, yes, it can interfere with 5G uh, connections and connectivity. So that's one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why they're justifying uh, this mass uh, culling and felling of trees right across the UK and Ireland. This topic, honestly, this idea that in amongst this green revolution where we're supposed to be saving the planet, the, the fact that trees, of all things, the ultimate capture of carbon, if you like, are being sacrificed on the altar of, of tech, uh, makes no sense to me. And we'll have to have you on again, uh, you know, to further this conversation. But so, uh, thank you so much so far, Richard Munn, uh, activist and broadcaster. After the